Hello, good day, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our lecture series for the understanding the self, focusing on the various views of the self. And uh, last time we talked about on the philosophical view. For this video, we are to particularly talk about the sociological views. So the self is a product of the modern society, among other constructions. The work of the sociologists are to, quest, to give us the question or to answer questions about the person in the community. And um, some of the questions that they are uh, giving or seeking is that uh, how does society influence you? Another, how do you affect the society? And more importantly, who are you as a person in the community? Sociology posits that the socially formed norms, the beliefs, the values come to exist within the person to a degree wherein it becomes natural and normal. So thus, this develops our self-identity. And we know naman na we are now living in the modern society compared to the ancient civilization from the past. But uh, we have to acknowledge that modernization had really a significant change. Uh, I mean, significantly influenced us, no? Sa, to, um, sa society. And uh, this has affected also how an individual builds or develops his or her identity. From the going back from our pre modern society, which, is center, which was centered on the survival, uh, people right now behave according to the rules and the traditions. So these are the few of the effects of our modern modernization. And um, that includes the immediate uh, environment that we want to live, where to live, you know, uh, what line of work, what career, or even to the point of who to marry. So very, um, very observant yung mga ganong bagay, no? or mga ganong sitwasyon that's an effect of modernization. And um, nevertheless, it really, uh, the modernization in time has really improved the living conditions of people. So a person is free to choose right now where to live, what line of work, or who they don't hate who they want to be with. But however, uh, stability has also decreased as our traditions and yung mga traditional support systems such as yung family has also decreased, has also a decrease in importance. Because in modern societies, individualism right now is dominant and developing one's self-identity is central. But these are the key characteristics of modern modernity. And this is according to Anthony Giddens, uh, the most patent major characteristics of modernity are first the industrialism. When we talk about industrialism, this is the social relations implied in the extensive use of our material power and machinery in all the processes of the production. The capitalism, on the other hand, uh, it involves on the production system, on both competitive product markets and the commodification or what we call putting the price tag of the labor power. And the third one is the institutions of the surveillance. These are the massive increase of power and the reach by institutions, especially our government. And lastly, we have the dynamism. 
this is the most evident characteristic no in a modern society because uh dynamism is characterized as having vigorous activity and uh progress and in fact in a modern society life is not a predetermined path no uh with limited options based on location yung family natin yung gender no it's uh our society right now has full of possibilities so in other words um makikita talaga natin na everything is subject to change and um changes happens more uh rapidly than ever before in human history so let's move forward to our next slide which is focusing on the social groups and the social network now we have here another sociologist see si george simmel uh, who expressed that people create social networks by joining uh, social groups so what are this or what are the difference between the two when we talk about a social group this is best described as having two or more people which interacts to one another they share similar characteristics and whose members also identify themselves as part of the group an example for this is your family your barkada your classmates no that's our basic social groups on the other hand um we have social network which refers to the ties or connections linking you to your social group so as we have said earlier like family barkada classmates and the connection that you have with your family is your blood relation so say for example with your barkada it's your friendship that's your network the connection that you have with your classmates it is the common interest to learn and um for the social groups this uh could either be organic or rational and when we talk about organic it is naturally occurring it is highly influenced by your family so this is usually formed in traditional societies kasi there is little diversity in these communities and um see si george simmel the sociologist that um uh na proponent nito stated that you join these groups because your family is also part of the group no yun yung pinakaunang dahilan bakit naging parte ka sa grupo na yan kaya organic kasi um uh, diyan yung pamilya mo so dun ka and ang tawag natin diyan is organic motivation or rootedness and um he noted also the positive effect of organic groups no and this means the foundation of the social network runs deep kasi nga organic no rooted and um thus giving the person a sense of belongingness so mafi-feel talaga ng tao na part siya kasi rooted nga um kahit hindi pa siya nag-effort na makigrupo doon, the moment na sinilang siya, so part na siya sa grupo. And um, kaya lang, syempre, kung may positive side, may downside. So, yung organic group only implies na medyo less yung freedom na may experience ng isang tao. And greater yung social conformity. Yung yung kumbaga kailangan niya talagang sundin yung mga kailangan kasi yun ang nararapat sa komunidad. No, see? Less yung freedom tapos greater pa yung social conformity. So, meaning to say, ang advantage niya, ang disadvantage niya rather is you are expected to act and behave according to the communities standards. So yun. Um uh, meron pang isa, tinatawag natin siyang rational group. 
and it occurs in modern societies. And these are made up of different people coming from the different places. So the family in modern societies is not anymore the main motivation why you, why you join to this type of group. Because rational groups are formed as a matter of shared self-interests. So, moreover, people join these groups out of their free will. Yun yung highlight natin, ha? Free will. Ginusto mo yan. Diba? Compared yung sa organic, yung parang since birth, part ka na talaga dyan. So, kahit hindi mo hiningi yung membership. So, yun yun. So, si Simel, sabi niya, ang tawag dito kung sa rational group is rational motivation. No, yung um tinatawag natin uh, yung rational group nag-imply siya na mas malaki yung chance na free ka. No, may greater freedom ka. Especially yung kung anong gusto mong gawin sa buhay, kung anong gusto mong gawin or explore sa sarili mo. And um relationships based on self-interest are not as embed na hindi embedded kagaya nung uh na, nauna yung organic organic group so yun yung ke, kailangan nating um lagyan ng pansin kasi yung interest nagche-change and when they do group members also change so the relationship between rational social networks is tenuous and yung person feels no meaningful connection with the others So, yun yung kaibahan ng dalawang social groups. Alright? So, punta na tayo. Or let's uh, have the theory of need uh, about the, and the social self. So, sabi nga ni Mead, a multiple personality is in a certain sense normal. Uh, ito. Have you ever watched someone na may ginagawang ano? Char. Uh, ito. Uh, have you ever watched someone like doing uh, simple chores? For example, of course. Of course, di ba? Na, na experience natin yan. So, even as yung mga bata pa tayo, um, nakikita na natin sa ibang tao like yung kung anong kung ano yung mga features or mga gawain nila mom or ni dad no or nanay tatay papa mama yung mga ganung bagay so why do we do that bakit 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 tayo nag-observe sa kanila so because doon tayo na tututo that's how we learn so we learn to do things we learn what's safe and what is not through observing them. So, when we watch other people, we learn a lot about ourselves. And moreover, kung pinapansin natin or napapansin natin yung mga ginagawa ng ibang tao, we also come to understand bakit ganun sila. Yung ganun. Yung ganun bagay. So, we understand bakit nagbe-behave sila sa mga the way they behave. And, um, bakit pinaglalaban nila yung mga identity nilang ganun? And ano yung mga piniplay nila as a role sa komuni- uh, komunidad? So on the other hand, isa din yun sa mga highlight natin. No? While we get to know ourselves and understand others through watching other people, how can you understand yourself? So can you watch yourself as objectively as you do the others? So, yun yung mga question na in-explore ni George Herbert uh, Mead. So, si Mead, ay isang sociologist from the late 1800s, well known for his theory of the social self. His work focused on how the self is developed. And his theory is based on the perspective that The self is a product of social interactions and inter- internalizing the external or the other people's views along with one's personal view about oneself. And he believed na 
yung self, hindi siya present at birth. Okay? Take note. According to me, hindi daw present yung self at birth. Rather, it develops over through our social experiences. So, dun na buo yung developing the self na theory ni Mead. So, Mead developed a concept that proposed different stages of the self-development. So, according to him, these are language, play, and game. And um, according to According to Mead, um, self-development and language are intimately tied. Uh, so through the shared understanding of symbols, yung ano, gestures, yung sound, yung language talaga yung nagbibigay sa isang tao ng capacity to express yung sarili niya. While at the same time, nakokomprehend din siya kung ano yung mga kinokommunicate sa kanya ng ibang tao. So, language sets the stage for self-development. So, siya talaga yung una, yung gano'n. Ha? Yung ikalawa naman is yung play. No? So, at this level, yung mga individual role play or yung pag-a-assume natin ng mga perspective ng ibang tao. So, role playing enables a person to internalize to internalize some uh, other people's perspectives. Hence, he or she uh, can develop an understanding kung ano yung nafe-feel din ng ibang tao about themselves in a variety of situations. And lastly, yung tinatawag nating games. So, the game stage is the level where the individual not only... Um, internalizes the other people's perspectives, yung sa play. Hindi lang ganun. He or she is able to take into account no, yung societal rules and adheres to it. So according to me, yung self is developed by understanding the rule, di ba? Sa, sa laro or sa isang laro, may yung mga rules, yung mga winnable, meron din naman nag-fail. So, Ang importante dyan is one must abide by it para manalo sa laro ng buhay. So, yun yung um, development of self daw according to Mead. And um, let's proceed to the two sides of self. This is still under the theory of um, Mead, the I and the me. So, Mead sees the person as an active process, not just a mere reflection of society. He further proposed two interactive facets of the self, that is the I and me. Uh, the me and the I have a didactic na relasyon, which is like a system na nag-check at balance. So according to Mead, no? Uh, yung ano yung me is the product of what the person has learned while yung excuse me um while interacting dun sa sa ibang tao at sa kanyang environment so yung kagaya ng learned behaviors yung attitudes yung pati yung mga expectations in life so that is comprising me which exercises social control over the self so Yung me na self natin, it sees to it that the rules are not broken. On the other hand, the I is that the part of the self that is unsocialized and is uh, spontaneous. Pag sinabi natin yung spontaneous, yung unpredictable, kumbaga. So, it's the individual's response to the community's attitude toward the person. Uh, basically, the I presents the impulses and the drives, which um, uh, expresses individualism and creativity. So, ito yung ano, kakaiba kasi the I does not blindly follow rules. It understands when to possibly bend or stretch the rules that govern social interactions. Hindi... Uh, 
Kumbaga, siya talaga yung ano, nag-initiate. And it constructs a response based on what has been learned by the me self. So, ito yung ano, pwede nating um, comparison table, sinabi nga, no? So, yung me uh, is the social you. So, that's pertain, uh, that pertains to how socially aware you are. Your, that's your reflective aspect. That is the self that has been shaped by the society. That is the self that is concerned to how others perceive you as a person. And um, these are coming, uh, this are the attitudes, the expectations, and the norms. And, and meanwhile, yung ano, yung I is more, uh, is the is, is spontaneous one and the uh, creative aspect. It reacts to immediate situation. Um, it is impulsive. It's unpredictable. It's subjective. And lastly, it's the doer or actor in the present moment. So, yun yung kaibahan na I and me. Pero, balikan natin, didactic yung relationship nila. Ha? Pag, sinabi na, pag sinabi natin didactic relationship, meaning, nag-check and balance din naman sila. Kasi, ikaw pa rin yun. No? That's the self. No? So, yun. Uh, salamat sa pakikinig. See you on the next video.